Hello again and welcome back. How was part two of the listening that you practiced at the end of the last lesson? I hope you got a good score and that you're now listening to lots of podcasts, TV shows, music and other stuff in English. Now, back to the writing part of the exam. I'm sure you remember that you have one hour and 20 minutes for the writing in total, yeah? Two parts. You have to answer two questions and each writing should be between 140 and 190 words. Well done if you remembered all of that, but do you remember the compulsory task that you have to do in part one? And what are the different tasks in part two? These are your choices in part two. And of course, part one is always an essay. In the last video about the writing paper, I said that it's important to know the difference between formal writing and informal writing. In this lesson, you're going to learn how to write a formal email or letter and we'll look at the differences between informal and formal written English. For example, informal letters or formal emails do not write contractions. I'm, he's, we're, they're, they've, I've, we've, no write the words separately and do not write informal expressions such as a bit, very cool, thanks a lot, etc. Don't write informal greetings or goodbyes like hi, lots of love, see you, great to get your email, that's all for now and don't use informal punctuation such as exclamation marks, dashes, dots, and those kind of things. So that's what you shouldn't do. But what can you write in a formal email or letter? Well, before we see an example question, let's look at some characteristics of a formal writing and also how can you begin and end a formal letter in English? Remember, this is what you need to know to pass the exam. After the exam, when you start to communicate by email in English, or if you are already, you'll see that the rules are a lot more flexible. In formal English, Use formal linking words. Words like however, nevertheless, in addition, furthermore. They are more formal linking words. But and also are more informal linking words. Don't use informal phrasal verbs if you know a more formal verb that has a similar meaning. For example, postpone is more formal than put off, but the meaning is the same. Employ is more formal than take on. I'll meet you at the airport is more formal than I'll pick you up. Generally speaking, phrasal verbs tend to be used when people speak and when they write informal English. And full verbs are more common in formal English. Use formal vocabulary. I'm sure it's the same in your language. You probably have formal language to distance yourself from the reader and show respect and more formality. Please inform me is more formal than let me know, for example. 
a considerable amount of is more formal than loads of. I am enthusiastic to work is more formal than I fancy working, etc. If there's no name in the question, use dear sir or madam. You might start a letter or email like this when you're applying for a summer job, for example, or when you're asking for information from a company or complaining to a company. So if there's no name, use dear sir or madam. And don't forget the comma after madam. If there is a name, use the name with Mr. for a man or Ms. for a woman. If a woman is married, she's Mrs. And if she's single, she's Miss. However, some women do not like to specify their marital status. They don't want people to know if they're married or not. If this is the case, you will see Ms. MS. A mister is a mister, whether he's married or not. And don't forget the full stop after Mr. and Mrs. because they are abbreviations. So that's how to start a letter or email. But how can you end one? Well, if you know the name of the person, you end with yours sincerely. And if you don't know the name of the person, you end with yours faithfully. The way that I remember which is which is never be sincere with someone you don't know. You can be faithful if you don't know their name, but only be sincere if you know their name. That's a little trick that helps me to remember the difference. And don't forget to write your name under the ending. So, yours sincerely, Pablo Escobar, or yours faithfully, Michael Mouse, for example. Let's look at an example question from the exam. A formal letter or email question is often applying for a job. You're asked to apply for a job. Here's an example. Read the email and think about the questions in red at the bottom. Pause the video now and read. Who do you have to write to? There's no name. Aha! So how would you begin your letter if there's no name? And how would you end it? Why are you writing? You're applying for the job, so it's a letter of application. Which words are important? What would you highlight or underline in this question? Well, I think these words are important. Are you young and enthusiastic? I'm not. I'm old and unenthusiastic. But you might be suitable. So you need to explain why you would be suitable for this job of activities coordinator. We need to focus on the three pieces of information that a successful applicant needs. You need to be able to organise team games and activities, have experience with young children and be interested in sports. And we need to think of any experience we have with children of this age group. In other words, children between the ages of 9 and 16. The word summer is important too. It's a job at a summer camp. How can we refer to that in our application letter? 
Do you remember we spoke before about how important it is to know the difference between formal and informal language? Well, here's an example answer to this summer school question. Some formal expressions have been removed. Pause the video, read the example answer, and don't worry about the gaps at the moment. Ignore the gaps. When you've finished reading, go back to the beginning and choose the best expression for each gap. OK? Now, pause the video. Here's what you should have. So now, check your answers. Read the letter again. Is it a good answer, do you think? Would this pass the exam? Are there good formal expressions in the letter? Did the student answer the question correctly? Are all of the points included? The advertisement says, be able to organize team games and activities. Well, the student says he or she organized a school play. So there's experience. The advertisement says, have experience with young children. The student says, he or she teaches English to children regularly. The advertisement says, be interested in sports. The student says, he or she goes hiking, mountain biking and swimming. The question says, write and explain why you would be suitable for the position of activities coordinator. The student writes, I have an ability to organize fun activities and this would be interesting for children. So yes, definitely. Question answered well. So for any job application, always focus on what they want from you and what you can do for them and not how the job might benefit you. This template is a guide for any application letter. I've removed the information that's relevant to this question. You can use this template and substitute information from any application question you answer in the exam. I suggest you learn these expressions and use the information from the exam question to complete the email or letter. We've looked at how to apply for a job, a summer school, part-time or holiday work, and these application letters or emails have been very common in recent B2 First exam questions. However, there may be a formal writing question that asks you to complain about something or to ask for information. So let's look at some expressions that can help you with these questions. Complaining. I'm not satisfied with... I'm not satisfied with the product. I'm not satisfied with the service at your hotel. I'm not satisfied with the condition of my room. I'm not satisfied with the quality of the device. I would like to complain about. I would like to complain about the condition of the car we rented. I would like to complain about the package holiday we went on. I would like to complain about the food on the cruise. Notice the prepositions satisfied with and complain about. 
It's not what I expected. The quality is not what I expected. The room is not what I expected. The service is not what I expected. I would be grateful if you could give me a refund. Please refund my money. Please refund my money because I'm not happy with the device. Please refund my money because the shirt does not fit. Please refund my money because I'm extremely unhappy with the technical support. Remember to use formal words. Use receive, not get. Use would, not will. Use could and not can. Okay, here are some final thoughts. Have you explained why you are writing in the first paragraph? Read the question carefully. Do you have to write a letter in a formal style? If so, make that switch in your brain to formal English. Underline and highlight important points and plan for five minutes before you start writing. What information can you include from the question? Have you written between 140 and 190 words? Remember, don't count words in the exam. It wastes time. What exactly do you want? Do you want an interview for a job? Do you want a refund? Do you want some information? Make sure your request is clear at the end of your email or letter. What action do you want the person to take? If you begin your letter or email, dear sir or madam, finish with yours faithfully. If you know the name of the person, dear Tom Smith, finish with yours sincerely. Now let's see what you remember. Take the quiz for this lesson and check your answers when you finished. There's also a PDF version of the formal expressions exercise for you to print and repeat if you like. And in the support section, there's an exam question that you can answer and a self-assessment sheet for you to check your writing with. Also, you have the Cambridge Write and Improve website to get a free AI-based feedback on your writing. In the next lesson, we'll look at reading and use of English, part five. What kind of questions are there in part five of the reading paper? And what techniques and strategies can you use to do part five effectively. You'll find out in the next video.